That was Chef Jonathan Lemon from Bird's Eye Biscuit. And I urge everybody to race out to that restaurant because that is maybe they are maybe the best ribs I've ever had. And those biscuits, homemade from scratch, are wonderful. You're listening to Stribling's New York on WOR Radio, 710 on your digital dial. If you need any more information about Stribling and Associates, contact Tony Simone, T-S-I-M-O-N-E at Stribling.com, and Tony will answer any question you may have as long as it requires something about real estate. On the phone with us again this week is sports agent Burton Rock Rocks. Oh, I'm wondering what's happening with my speech here. Burton Rocks is also a best-selling New York Times author. Welcome, Bert. Uh, Rob, great to be on. So you and I have discussed things in the past uh, that sometime are out of my wheelhouse in terms of intellectuality, but I'm going to have you can try to explain it to me again. You've reversed the the initials IQ to QI, and you use those analytics for a number of things, including baseball. Tell us about that. Well, I came up with this concept called the, the QI sheet, and basically it's the QI is the sum of two distinct metrics adding up to a total. Uh, UPA, unique personal achievement, and unique personal attribute, UPAT, and you get five points for each. So the QI sheet is the best score would be a 10 out of 10. And uh, basically what that is, is the unique personal achievement part of it is what you've overcome through adversity, how you've led others to a specific and beneficial result in achieving something, how you failed at something and then overcome that failure to achieve, how you've been rejected maybe in the past for, say, a, a position, a job, and overcome it and received uh, accolades anyway, and basically achieved a specific result and honor in a category that's not thought to be quite relevant to the task at hand, but really gives good insight into the person. And that leads us into the UPAT part of the metric, which is the unique personal attributes, creativity during adversity, leadership, tenacity, amenability, and overcoming adversity, either with a disability or a hardship as you know, a testament to your inner strength. And where I've used this specifically is in two places. I've used this in negotiations with owners and general managers in Major League Baseball and in the NFL with uh, coaching clients, in baseball with players and with uh, coaches and in the NFL with coaches. And I basically told them that sometimes the best analytic can be the intangibles of life quantified. And this has come to me from, you know, the old expression clubhouse chemistry. And, you know, growing up around my dad, Lawrence Rocks, I would have the benefit of Hall of Famers like Ralph Kiner, uh, who was a friend of my dad's, and he would talk about the intangibles. All those old school guys would talk about the intangibles. Buck O'Neill, uh, who you've seen featured in Ken Burns's baseball, uh, talked about the intangibles. And I learned from these great men uh, that they are important, and we can attempt to quantify them as a way of rewarding people for something not previously thought to be important enough in the terms of a stat in baseball. So it's analytics in a new realm and thought. And the uh, the owners and GMs have bought into this. Well, don't you think that baseball, more than any other sport, has more intangibles and bizarre nuances than any other sport? I'll give you an example. I'm going to go way old school. You're younger than I am. But I've always been fascinated by pitching. And Ron Swoboda and I were talking about this recently, just about different pitchers and uh Steve Blass was a great pitcher. Not a, I don't think he's a Hall of Famer or anything, but he, he pitched for the Pirates and I think even took them to the World Series. And then he finished a great season, and the next season suddenly he just couldn't pitch. They said there was nothing different about his delivery. There was nothing different about his velocity. Just He, he just couldn't pitch anymore. He, was getting, he got murdered and clobbered. And that's the kind of thing that happens in baseball. I don't know. Can that work within your realm, or is that just somebody having uh, their own kind of in interior nervous breakdown? That absolutely works within my realm. And one of the ways uh, that I've talked about my players at the professional level, I'll give you an example, Aaron Wilkerson with the Red Sox, he just won Pitcher of the Week 
to start the year in double A for them. He's one of their top pitching prospects. And, and what I was telling Red Sox management was, here's a guy that was stocking the frozen freezer section a couple of years ago, not having been drafted and playing independent ball. And if you give him this chance, he's going to shine because he's already shown the tenacity to stick through things. And let it let alone be said afterwards. I mean, he goes to the Arizona Fall League and comes out this year out of the gate strong. And you know, the rest is is history. And even at a at a at a more important level, the draft, which is just two weeks away from us, one of the things in advising players that I've told my players and their families is that you need to find out what makes you unique and different, and you need to convey that to the scout. They're not mind readers. And you need to tell those people that you have the tenacity to make it to the majors, to excel, and these are examples why. Classic case, Cardinals. They take Paul DeYoung out of Illinois State in the fourth round last year. He was a pre-med, biochem major. And one of the things I told him is do not underestimate the power of that because you are methodical. Science and medicine require methods and stick-to-itiveness and methodical. You don't see too many people in that area. You don't meet famous chemists and famous physicians and they're they're, uh, shifting their weight around. They're jumpy. They're very calm. They're methodical. And this is what's going to have you handle the ups and downs. And the Cardinals bought into that first year out of the gate. Again, one player of the week and now is in double A doing very well. And he just became one of the top Bowman Chrome kids for 2016 with endorsements. So, you know, it's a situation where whether it's conventional or unconventional, the metric works. And I've even met I met with uh, MLB uh, the Office of the Commissioner with uh, their diversity program because I said that this will give kids who are undergoing hardships in their life uh, through diversity issues a chance to show what they've overcome and how they've achieved. And they find it to be very interesting. So I think that the metric is going to be here for the future only because, as you and I know, Rob, there's no way to guess somebody's story. Anybody that thinks that they can, oh, I can, I can guess that person's story, that, that that person is way off base. Nobody knows what somebody's going through. Well, that's one one of the things that upsets me about writers because I've covered so many sports, but I feel that it's really hard for journalists to make a criticism of a specific player and circumstance on a team unless they're a beat writer. Oh my gosh, here comes that beautiful stribbling music again. I can't believe we've just spoken for nearly nine minutes. So we're going to have to make this a continual thing through baseball season because I love talking analytics and I like old school and I like Moneyball thought as well. And you kind of have a combination of both going on there. And it's always interesting to talk to you. So uh, I hope you're going to come back and join us soon, Burton. Absolutely. Thanks Thanks so so much. much. You've been listening to Stribblings New York on 710 WOR Radio. Don't forget to contact Tony Simone, T-S-I-M-O-N-E at Stribbling, S-T-R-I-B-L-I-N-G dot com. Good afternoon, everybody. Thanks for joining us.